everyone, my name is Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on knitting and yarn and that's pretty much it. So if that interests you, feel free to subscribe, check out my other videos, check out my Instagram and TikTok, which is at Jamie underscore creates. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to make your own knit mohair shruggy. Basically exactly what I'm wearing right now. Please excuse the ends. They haven't been weaved in. I'm really lazy. <laughs> so yeah, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through how I made this shruggy. I have made, I think this is my seventh one. So it's very replicatable pattern, but yeah, they work up super quickly. So make one in every color, make just one, whatever you want, make them for your friends. They're super trendy right now. And I find they're actually really, really like genius because sometimes it's like too hot to wear a jumper, but like too cold to not wear a jumper. So it's kind of like in between weather and like I find these are like perfect. Um, and they're also really fun to style and I probably need to get a bit more creative than just pairing them with a white singlet. And they're super fun to knit. So this tutorial is going to go through how I made it. I am gonna talk about my stitch counts. I will flag that some of them are wrong. I ended up actually going back and fixing them and but didn't film that because they weren't like super consequential, but I will just flag that like a few of the stitch counts uh, and row counts towards the very end are slightly incorrect. It doesn't make a huge difference, but like just because I want it, you know, I want to keep this and I want it to fit exactly how I want it. For me, I needed to go back and fix those, but yeah, it's like a lot of this is very much kind of tailoring it to your body and playing around with stitch counts to make it fit you the best. So it really hopefully won't be a big deal, but yeah, I'm sorry that I did make a few little mistakes. Before you begin, I will just talk a little bit about what I used for these sleeves and what I would recommend that you use. So I made these sleeves using Hip Knit Shop Fluff Yarn, which I actually, I don't have any like a full skein left of this color that I can show you. I have it in like a bunch of other colors. So this is the yarn that I used and it is a mohair and wool blend, 78% mohair, 13% merino wool, and 9% polyamide. And it is 50 grams for 100 meters. So that is really important to know if you're trying to find a appropriate yarn for this pattern. I would highly recommend any yarn with this fiber content and weight meterage ratios, all that stuff. Um, a few that I can recommend. Um, wool and the Gang Take Care Mohair is like, I genuinely think exactly the same as this like I've made another pair using that and the yarns they feel exactly the same they work up exactly the same Hip Knit Shop definitely has a bigger color selection and a lot more like bright colors but I also really love the Wool and the Gang selection and yeah couldn't recommend both of these more another one if, especially if you're in Australia that I recommend is the Cardi Gang mohair they're like chunky mohair that they have um, I have like a bunch of like scraps left over from other sleeves that I've made. It's the, I mean, these are just leftover skeins, but it's the same grams, meterage, all that, and the same fiber content. So it's definitely not the exact same yarn. Like I can definitely tell the difference between them, but they have also a great color selection and free shipping for Australia, New Zealand, and US. Those are like the main the three that I've found that are like perfect for this pattern, but there's definitely a lot of room for experimentation. You can hold strands together if you have like a lighter weight mohair. Um, you can definitely try a Suri yarn as well. If you have sensitivities, I would recommend Suri yarn. I prefer, generally prefer to use Suri over mohair, but um, it really just depends on the mohair. But yeah, play around. Try, if you want to follow this tutorial exactly, try to match gauge. But if your gauge is different, you might just need to change your needle sizes or yeah, I can give you like a general rule of thumb in terms of made to measure. Figure out the measurements that you want. So figure out firstly how wide you want your sleeve to be, not how you can do the full circumference, but I just prefer to go with and then I just double it. And then also how long you want your sleeves to be. Those are like the main things you need to figure out. And then once you've chosen your yarn, knit up a gauge swatch. Ideally, you knit it up in the same, you know, needle size to get the same look. I use 15 millimeter needles for this pattern and then six millimeter needles for the neck trim. So knit up a gauge swatch, which means like just cast on a bunch of stitches and knit a square basically to figure out how many stitches you have for 10 centimeters and how many rows you have for 10 centimeters. So for this pattern, my gauge was roughly eight stitches and 11 rows for 10 centimeters each way. But like this also is like, it's super forgiving. Like it's very stretchy and the stitches can vary in size because I am using such big needles with yarn that maybe isn't 
necessarily uh, like meant for 15 millimeter needles. Like I think the recommended uh, needle size says, yeah, it says eight millimeters. So I would say like eight to 10 is probably what I would normally use with this yarn, but I wanted this kind of like mesh, super airy vibe. So I've sized up quite a bit and also it works up really quickly. So the gauge isn't gonna be 100% accurate because it's not like super tight stitches. But anyway, once you've figured out what your gauge is, then figure out what your measurements that you would like them to be. Let's say you want your sleeve to be 15 centimeters wide. I think mine is like 16 or 17, but let's say you want it to be 15. And let's say your gauge is eight stitches. What you need to do is you need to multiply 15 by eight and then divide the number that you get by 10 because that's how wide your gauge is, 10 centimeters. So that's, that's how you'll figure out how many stitches you need to cast on. Note that if you're doing width, you do need to double it. But if you want to just figure it out with circumference, you can also then just use the circumference as your measurement number and then just do the same calculation. I hope that makes sense. Then you can do the same thing for the rows. So let's say you want yours to be 40 centimeters long and your row gauge is 11 stitches, which I think is mine. And I think that's how long I made these. Um, then you would multiply 11 by 40 and then divide by 10. Then you'd get your number of rows that you need to do to make the sleeve as long as you want. So basically once you've started, once you've measured your gauge and you're happy with it, you are ready to cast on. I also just wanted to add that this is not a knitting tutorial. I'm not going to go through how to do um, basic techniques. There are some techniques that I, I will show, but I probably am not the best person to teach techniques I'm just really gonna be honest I'm not that good at it and there are so many other tutorials on the internet for those techniques so if you have never done any of the techniques or some of the techniques that I show in this video I'm going to have tutorials linked in the description from other incredible creators that have put out incredible free resources and I would highly recommend you follow their tutorials on how to do those techniques over my own. Yeah, I would recommend this pattern if you are new to knitting, but if you want to learn the very, very basics, I would figure those out before you watch this tutorial. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so I have my yarn, my needles, and we are going to cast on. All right, so I use the long tail cast on method. You are welcome to use a different cast on method if that is your preferred but i've always used long tail and pretty much exclusively use it so i'm just casting on my 24 stitches and then i cast on one extra stitch for um joining in the round so i am going to be using the magic loop method which to start with is gonna require me to split my stitches into kind of three groups. They don't have to be perfectly even, but as long as they're kind of similar, that's okay. Very important to make sure your stitches aren't twisted here. So that's just, yeah, that's very, very important. And to join in the round, how I do it is, as I said, so I take on the last stitch, I mean, the first stitch that I cast it on, I take that and slip it onto the right needle and then I mean, usually I'd use a needle, but these are a little bit blunt. So I'll just take this stitch, slip it over and just pull on both strands. And then what I'm going to do to make a stitch marker is I'm just going to take some scrap yarn and I'm just going to tie it around the needle. Oop, <laughs> lost it. Just going to tie it around this needle here. And that's just going to be my stitch marker. All right, so we're ready to start knitting. So we're literally just going to be knitting every stitch round and round and round for a long time, for a lot of rows. So the way you do magic loop here is once I've kind of got to the end of this point, I'm then going to slide these stitches up to this needle and then kind of readjust, pull this out and you're ready to keep knitting once again. Probably a better video on the internet than this on how to, <laughs> on how to do magic loop. This first row, first couple of rows even can be a little bit finicky, but it does kind of loosen up as, as we, as we go. <laughs> get there we 
we finished the first round, we're just going to slip the stitch marker and we're literally just going to keep knitting. At some point, your stitches will kind of loosen up enough to be able to only have to kind of do one magic loop instead of two, if that makes sense. So at that point, I will show you, but it's pretty much the exact same process. So as you can see, I'm literally just knitting in the round, all knit stitches. Also, you may have noticed by now that I knit continental style, which just means I hold the working yarn in my left hand and I find that this is a much quicker way to knit and just the way that I feel most comfortable. Oh my God, I'm just trying to get this back on. Yeah, that's just what feels most comfortable for me. But you just do whatever feels most comfortable and natural to you. A tip that I have with Magic Loop is to make sure that you're not pushing your cord through the same stitches every time because you'll start to see a big like gap kind of form. So I just make sure to change it up um, between each row just to keep it consistent. So I just wanted to show you since I have done um, significantly more now, uh, the stitches have kind of loosened up, which means that I can just do one magic loop. So I just take, I go about halfway um, approximately, pull the cord through and now I have the cord between these two stitches and I just knit up until I reach that point. And then I do the same thing. So I just find a spot to pull the cord through. Bunch the stitches up and you're ready to knit again. And yeah, I literally just, just try not to bunch them up too much because then it can be a bit confusing. I literally just knit just the same way. Yeah, all the way across. And I just need a little bit more yarn. Yeah, so um, I also find that the cast on can be a little bit tight. So you might have seen before, I just kind of pulled it out just to um, kind of set all the stitches into the, where I want them to be and leave this uh, cuff as uh, big as I want it to be. Um, if you want a really tight cuff, you can definitely leave it, um, but I prefer to just kind of pull it out. Um, and yeah, so far I'm absolutely loving how this yarn is working up. I think it's so pretty and it's gonna look really nice in like a, night, a better light because um, it's like late afternoon right now, but in like the sunlight, I think it will look beautiful that nice halo from the mohair. So I'm gonna be knitting for a total of 44 rows. That is gonna get me until about an inch or two below my underarm, which is where I would like my uh, sleeve to sit. So that is how long I'm gonna knit for, but if your arm is longer, you might need to do more rows than that, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm at the point now where I have done 44 rows and that is a good length for me. This sits underneath the underarm and at this point I'm going to cast off a few stitches for the underarm. So I'm going to cast off four stitches but if your sleeves are wider you might want to cast off more. Um, you might want to cast off less. It's really kind of up to you um, and how you want it to sit. I find four is a good amount to cast off. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast off four stitches. So we're going to cast off one, ooh, one, wasn't very successful. One, two, three, and then the last one here. So what we're going to now do is just knit the rest of the stitches that are on the needles all the way up until where we um, 
sorry, where we casted off. <laughs> So what you can see now is these are going to be like our shoulder stitches here and then we have our underarm here. So I'm now going to knit um, nine more rows. So I've already technically done our first row and um, we're going to have 10 in total. So this is the first one. And now I'm going to turn my work. So I'm going to be working flat because we've casted off a few stitches here which means that we now need to work flat in rows back and forth. So I'm going to be starting with the purl row. So I'm going to work across all of these stitches and just purling all the way across the row. <laughs> to knit across all these stitches so we're just going to keep doing that until we have done 10 rows if you want to do more rows or less rows that's totally fine um, I would just recommend trying on um, your sleeve once you have done those rows to see because where it ends is going to be where your neckline starts um, you will be doing a ribbing as well so keep that in mind but that is going to be kind of where your neckline is going to be um, sitting if that makes sense um, so just keep that in mind if you feel like you want maybe a neckline that is a little bit tighter closer to your neck you might want to do an extra couple of rows but if you want it to be a little bit looser and sit more off the shoulder, then you should do less rows. So yeah, it's really kind of up to you and your desired fit. But I find 10 rows to be good for the way that it sits on my body. Okay, so I have done 10 rows um, since casting off the underarm stitches. And, oh, and I am now ready to split for I guess I don't even know what to call these I guess just like the front and back little sections that will go underneath the, neck, the neckline um, which will end up connecting to the other sleeve so you'll see there's kind of there'll kind of be like a seam in the middle of your chest and of your back um, this is a completely reversible pattern so there's no front or back technically but obviously when you wear it there's a front and a back so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut we're gonna knit a few stitches and cast off stitches which will be the stitches for kind of like the shoulder slash neck um, and then knit the last couple stitches. So based on the stitch count that I have, I like to do, I knit four stitches. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to cast off the next 12 stitches. And then there's three stitches left, but I've already got a stitch here. So that's the last four stitches that remain. So you'll now see that we have four stitches here, casted off stitches here, which we can just spread out and four stitches here. So when the, I kind of let you visualize this. So when the sleeve is sitting, so we've got our underarm here, this is going to go up the shoulder and then this is going to be part of the neckline so like let's bring this down so like you're going to have um stitches like picked up from here for the uh the neck trim um and then what we're about to knit now are going to be two i guess like little strips so they're going to like go this way and this way and those are going to go across the front and back of your body so we're going to just leave these stitches kind of on hold for a second just while we work this first side so we've already knitted and we're now going to purl 
So we're gonna work seven rows. This is the first row. So we're gonna go one row. I personally just do seven rows because that's what works best for me. But if you have um, broader shoulders or just, yeah, you feel like you that's not reaching the middle of your chest, um, then I would just do more rows. Or if it's going past, do less rows. Um, you may need to do less rows on the shoulder section, um, just depending on, yeah, the shape of your body. visualize this now so this is going to going to go across the the front of your chest and this is going to sit right in the middle and then you're going to have your other uh, sleeve attached to this so i prefer to use this three needle bind off you are welcome to cast off here and then just use the horizontal mattress stitch to seam the two pieces together um but i prefer three needle bind off i think it leaves less of like a little ridge in the middle so what i'm going to do is just cut a decent tail and leave these stitches on hold and I'm going to come back to them later on but before I do I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side so we're just gonna get our yarn attach it on the pearl side because we've already done the knit stitches the way I like to attach my yarn is to just to tie the yarn to the first stitch but you can use kind of whatever method you want. Some people like to just go ahead and just start start knitting, start purling um, without like securing the yarn, but I just find it's a bit easier to just like tie it on. And then, yeah, we're just gonna do the exact same thing. So because I'm using the three needle bind off, I'm going to just place these live stitches on a stitch cord, but you can use scrap yarn, a stitch holder, um, whatever you want. You can put them on a spare pair of needles if you want. I just like using these stitch cords and yeah, I'm literally just going to keep these on the cord until I'm ready to do the bind off, which will be after I've already done this entire process again for the second sleeve. So I'm just going to set this aside and repeat the entire process again for the second sleeve and I will see you back here when I have done that. Okay, so I have completed the second sleeve and I have kept my stitches I mean I've kept my yarn still attached to the ball because we're now going to do the three needle bind off what we've got to do is just line these two pieces up so that we've got the underarm cast off facing up sorry this keeps falling out <laughs> off my bed so we want to make sure that the right sides are facing each other so what I'm going to do now is take my second needle and I'm going to place it into these stitches. So now we have the two 15mm needles, these two sections with the right sides facing each other. And what I'm going to need to do now is take a third needle. I'm going to use a 12mm needle, but you can definitely also use a 15mm needle. I just find this one's a bit pointier. So I prefer to use this and we're going to do a three needle bind off. So we're going to insert the needle into the first stitch and then into it, insert into the corresponding stitch. So you can see it's going through both stitches, yarn over, pull through and then knit these two stitches together. Now we'll have one stitch on our right needle. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Pull that through and then now we're going to take this one of these needles it doesn't really matter and bind off one stitch now we're going to do the same thing again we're going to insert into both stitches knit them together and then bind off oh there we go and last one and we'll just pull that yarn to tighten it bind off it's gonna fasten off cut the yarn 
working through Titan. And now you can see we have a pretty much invisible seam over here. Very like flat, there's not like a big dent underneath it, which if you were to do the horizontal mattress stitch, you'd probably have. And now we're going to repeat the same thing for the second, I don't even know what to call this, <laughs> little piece, front piece, back piece, whatever. So what you can now see is that when we flip this over, we now have, I'll try and just like lay it out. We now have our pieces connected. Perfect. So this can be the front or the back. We have our shoulders and this makes the whole neckline. So the last thing now we need to do is knit the neck trim, which is going to help cinch this in because this will look really big right now, but because you're going to use six millimeter needles for the neckline, it will definitely be smaller. <laughs> Sorry, the sun's kind of come in. Hopefully that's not too weird lighting. So I've got my six millimeter needles on a, I think this is a 60 centimeter cord, pretty sure. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my yarn. I like to touch it just kind of between where the shoulder and the front section or the back section, whatever, um, kind of connect. And we're going to start picking up stitches. And because your stitches that you've just, you know, knit were with 15 millimeter needles and they're really big. And now you're picking up stitches on six millimeter needles. We are going to pick up every stitch. So that makes it really easy to, um, to like, there's no keeping track of, you know, skipping any stitches. We're, we're literally going to pick up each one because um, we're trying to cinch these in and if we're skipping stitches then it's going to be way too tight so yeah that's what we're going to do so you can just see I'm inserting my needle into each stitch and then just yarning over and pulling that stitch through it's super easy and we're just going into like the edge stitch as you can see when you get to the shoulder stitches which is like the stitches that you cast cast it off you just kind of insert your needle into this like top little v where where you have your cast it off stitch so it's a bit different to when you're picking up stitches along the um kind of like side edge of um your rows rather than just like the very top so like along the cast off edge so it can be a little little bit tricky with mohair but honestly it doesn't really matter like you don't have to be super accurate like you can try and make sure you get into the holes but it's not a huge deal like you can't really tell and as long as your needle's gone into some kind of hole it'll be all right so you can see i've done all of these and all of these and we're just gonna repeat the same thing until you get to the uh, very start all right so I have just got all the way around and you're gonna just want to count your stitches and make sure that you have an even number um, and place a stitch marker to mark the beginning of the round so we're now gonna begin knitting our one by one ribbing so we're gonna do knit purl knit purl and then just continue to knit and purl all the way around and we're gonna do four rounds of one by one ribbing so yeah literally quite easy just four rounds of, of the same alternating knit and purl stitch okay so i've just done my four rounds and you can see the ribbing has all been worked up and now we're ready to cast off. So I like to use a stretchy cast off for this ribbing just because mohair doesn't have a lot of stretch, um, especially when using like smaller needles like this. So this is just to make sure it goes over your head super easily and it's comfortable. So this is how I do the stretchy cast off. I knit one, purl one, and then I take the left needle, I insert it through the back, like from front to back through the back loops of these two stitches, then you yarn over as if you were to purl. 
and you purl them two together and they go back onto the right needle. So now we have a knit stitch. So we do a knit and now we're going to take the left needle and we're going to place it through the front of these two stitches. So now we have our right needle behind. We're going to yarn over and we're going to essentially knit those two together. So we're going to purl and now do the same thing we did before. So to the back, yarn over and we're going to purl. And then now we're going to knit this stitch, place the left needle through the front so that the right needle is at the back, yarn over and knit. We're going to purl, place this needle behind so this needle is in front yarn over and we're just going to keep doing this all the way across it off all of the neckline stitches and now I'm just going to join the, oh, the last stitch so I just pick up a stitch and fasten off and there we go so there you have it there is your neckline now all you really have to do is weave in all these ends and then you'll be all done. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this tutorial was helpful. I hope you have managed to get yourself a nice, gorgeous pair of sleeves. I personally absolutely love mine and I think I'm going to wear these to the Harry Styles concert. So that's a sleigh. If you did decide to make these, I would absolutely love to see yours. So please tag me in your Instagram stories, posts, reels, anything that you post, I would love to see. My Instagram once again is at jamie underscore creates, that's J-A-I-M-E. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all your beautiful pieces. I think that's it for this video. So if you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe, all those things. Comment if you made it to the end and you actually made the sleeves or if you just watch this for fun because to be honest I watch a lot of tutorials for fun even though I'm not actually making the piece so totally chill if that's you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!